guys, this is Panzer Marsha 36, and today's video is going to be a new and improved figure painting video. Last one was not very great. I had some good techniques in there, but my figure painting skills were not as good as they are now, so skipping to the end result here, here is the figure. I'm gonna put him on my E50 diorama. And uh I'm incredibly pleased with how it came out. I did a really nice job, if I do say so myself, on the folds on the shirt, on the ammo pouches and even the markings, I had to do an SS patch there on his collar, that was quite hard to do. Uh, as was the camouflage pattern on the helmet there, but yeah, I'm quite pleased with it. Uh, the German green on the pants and the collar turned out a little bit more uh, gray than it really is, but I don't know, I like it. I think it kind of goes nicely with the tunic. If it was a little more green, I think it would be more contrast, I don't think I like it very much. Yep, so uh, in the video I show you how to go through the uh, all the painting processes. I explain all the colors that I used and how to mix them, like the percentage of the mix and stuff like that. And I go over like the washes, of course the camouflage pattern, the markings, uh, the metallic finish on the SDG-44, the stock on the SDG-44, all the colors I used for the gear on this back, uh, the boots, the pigments on the boots and knees, and uh, the face. Yeah, that's what a lot of people have trouble with, but I go into some detail on that. And uh, if anybody's wondering, just for reference right now, behind me is all the products that I use. Looks like a lot, but you could probably get away with using, like, you only need really one green, and then you can just use the black and get this color here. XF57, you could just use 55. It, it's not very different, a little more pink. And the brushes, I have a, um, if this is, a, this is a three below zero and a five below zero. It's five below zero. It's a five. I'm oh, sorry. This is the five below zero. It's a five and then like a slash and then a zero. This one here is a one, and this one here is a number four, and it's, it's a square. So this is what I use for putting pigments on a large surface like the boot, and for just painting general base colors like the pants. I use this uh, three below zero here, the one probably also for that, and then this. Five below zero here. It's quite small, as you can see. That's what I do for like uh, you know, highlights on the tunic and the camouflage pattern on the helmet. Yep. So I uh, hope you guys enjoy the video, and let's get on to painting this figure. So first of all, as you can see here, I have modified the figure um, from the one you get in the kit, which is right here. I've given him an STG44 instead of the Car 98. And then I give him some STG-44 ammo pouches um, instead of the rifle ammo. And I was back, I gave him just like the standard, uh, you know, water uh, can. And then some, uh, like an entrenching tool, the weird, you know, bag that they always have here. And then this hat uh, onto a hand grenade, actually. And these ones got a holster in there, you know. Just gave him a whole bunch of little pouches and things like that. With figures, you can always make them your own way and add stuff to them. Just make sure that, you know, if you're going to give them a rifle like this, you give them some rifle pouches, not MP40 pouches. So with most dragon figure sets, you get a painting guide. And uh, this is a newer kit, so the colors are actually accurate, not like bright orange and bright green. So as you can see here, this is the figure in his pants, and the photo are the standard German field gray, I'm pretty sure it's called. And I've mixed this color by using a 60-40 uh, mix, uh, and the 60 is Imperial Japanese Gray XF77, and then the other color is 40% uh, Japan Air, JA Green, I think, Japan Air Force Green, I'm not sure, XF13, but you could also use NATO Green, it would be the exact same thing. And I've thinned them a bit, and now I'm just going to paint the figure, his pants with them, and I'm probably just going to do some other figures. Now as you can see over here, I made a slightly lighter mix of it. Add a little more grain and a little bit of white to it. And I'm just going to use that to uh, paint the, um, the helmet that he's got on his back, the one that doesn't have the uh, fabric cover.
painted the helmet of the figure uh, XF60 just as a base color and now I'm going to paint the uh, camouflage kind of like tunic smock thing he has on with a 50-50 mixture of XF55 and XF60. And now I've painted some parts of the figure, like the magazine in his hand, the magazine on the STG-44, um, the metal part of the shovel, the top of the grenade on his back, and the top of his water bottle, all with a mix that is um, 2 to 1 ratio of uh, the XF-77, and then the 1 part of the ratio is the NATO black. And uh, then I also painted the body of the water bottle with uh, Japan Ground Self Defense, Japan Ground Self Defense Force, brown, and the helmet there. You see, I did some winter whitewash on it. I did some chipping on it. If you really want to know how to do that, I did a video where I did it on my Panzer IV, and you can just watch that video and it explains how I used that. And uh, now I'm going to do some painting of the wood, the stock, and on the handle. Alright, so for the wood, I'm using um, Vallejo's Panzer Aces. with now a mix of uh, equal parts once again the same brown same gray and a and xf7 red and i've got more of a gray red color for this stock which i think looks nice i'm experimenting though this might be a wrong color You can see the pattern on the stock right now. It's kind of like a, it's not like normal wood. It's more of a reddy brown wood mixture, which I think is, uh, uh, that's what I find the stock on the SDG 44 is like. It's not, uh, it's not normal wood. It's more red, dark wood. But I think I'm still gonna lighten that up. Light, well, sorry, not light, a uh, kind of like a thin tint. That's the last one's a thick coat. This one's a thin tint of the old wood again that we used before from Panzer Aces. Vallejo. As you can see, I painted the grip on the STG uh, with the same colors as the stock. And then I 
painted the, the STG with the base coat of uh, the NATO black again, which is XF69. Didn't show you that because it was just me painting it on, but I made sure the paint was quite thin. I did a couple of coats to make sure that I didn't lose any detail. And I've got a pencil here, which is a 4B pencil. And uh, the higher the B value, um, the softer the pencil. If it's an H and it's higher, then it's going to be a harder pencil, so it's going to be harder to get, you know, um, some color off of it. Since this is a softer pencil, it's going to be easier for me to just kind of lightly rub this and get some metallic sheen on it. Now I'm going to highlight the uh, camo spock uh, mixes about, let's say, 40% XF60 and 60% XF2 flat white.
Now for the ammo pouches on the SGD44. As you can see there, sometimes this kind of dark green, sometimes beige. This one's beige, but it's got green straps. And here you can see it's black with a leather top. So there's many different options where you can paint them. All right, so I decided to paint the ammo pouches with a uh, mixture of 50% XF60 and 50% XF57, which produces a similar color to the, the mix that I did on the uh, tunic, you know. Uh, but as I used the XF57, which is a little more pink than the 55. So there's a contrast. I'm not sure if you can see it. I think you can, though. It looks a little more orange. And I'm also going to do a, maybe a brown wash on it. I'm going to make sure it's visibly darker than the camo tunic he has on. Now I'm going to be playing thinned um, AK Interactive track wash because it's just really dark brown. You could use anything that's dark brown. And I'm going to give the figure a wash over his tunic. So here is the figure now that I've applied the wash onto his tunic, or his camouflage smock, or whatever you want to call it. As you can see, it basically did, did the same job as when I put the uh, dark green down here. It just makes shadows. I just find that someone's making a wash on something like this, which is more, a lot more dense folds. It would take a while to do them all with a brush, so I think it's a little more efficient. I'll just do it with a wash like that, but as you can see, it looks really nice. And I did get the nice contrast I wanted between the ammo pouches and the color of the smock there. But you can see on the pants, you can see there is a highlight. Like I, I'm really happy with the highlight they did on the pants there. You go right here. Who's back? You see the more folds there on the shirt are really nice. The wash. I don't think I told you the color I used for the uh the water can there, but it's the um it was some of the XF72, but I um, lightened it a bit with some white, and then I also had some kind of shadows on it. Yeah, but as you can see, and I also used the uh, the pencil like I did on the uh, STG on the top of the grenade there, and on the uh, on the water pouch. You can see it's a bit shiny. But overall, my th my uh, figure's looking pretty nice, and uh, I'm really happy with them so far. And I was originally planning to do a camouflage pattern on the smock there, either like, you know, the P-Dot camouflage or maybe the uh, the Autumn SS camo. I've got one on my phone here that's pretty interesting that I found. And this one's pretty cool, if you can see that. That's It, lo it looks quite blue, but basically that's like a, it's like a gray, and then the, uh, the yellow there is like the, the yellow I've painted on them, and then there's some olive green. That looks like the black stuff, kind of like over there. It looks pretty bad on my phone, though, but... Yeah, I was originally planning to do something like that. Um, but... I actually really like the tunic right now, and I think that's going to go nicely with the E50 that I've painted up, which is also kind of like this similar color, just one color of the uh, German yellow. So I think I'm going to leave the tunic like that and instead paint the helmet with the camouflage pattern. I'm not sure that they did this type of camo spot, just yellow. Usually you get a camo pattern on it. I know they did some kind of overcoats in the yellow, but you know what? I don't care. I really like it. It's my model. So all we have left to do is the face, the boots, uh, the hands, all along with the face. And I'm going to show you how we do the camouflage pattern on the helmet. Alright, so now you can see that I've started to do the skin on the person, on the figure. <clears throat> and uh, as you can see on the hand here, I did a. Uh, I had a base coat with this uh, model color dark plush. It's not really a nice color though, but I usually just use it as a base color. 
And then I go over it now with uh, XF57. This is right, yep. Buff. And I'm just going to show you how to do this. It's not hard. I'm just doing a thin coat of this over top of the base color that I have. And now while we're waiting for the flesh to dry, I'm just going to paint the boots with a coat of XF80 for no, 69, NATO black once again. <laughs> NATO black is a nice color because it's not very, it's not like pure black, it's a nice dark, extremely dark gray. And now I'm going to be applying a wash to the Vigor's face and hands. This wash is a uh, lightened version of AK Interactive's dark wash for Operation Iraqi Freedom vehicles, I don't know. It's just not as dark of a brown as the uh dry mud pigment, just like a pale, dusty pigment. And I did that, <clears throat> did that on the boots, and then also a little bit up on the pants or on the knees. It's hard to see on the camera, but there's a hint of dirt on the knees. And the figure's looking pretty good. So as you can see, I've been, you know, working around the pigments a little bit more. Just got a little bit better build up there on the boots. And, uh, for the face and hands, I, uh, I uh, just kind of darken up a bit with a wash because they're a little bit pale. And, uh, yeah, I just, you can see that his cheeks are a little more red now. Before it was like even more pale than the uniform, which looked a bit bad. And uh, as you can see, I've put a wash of that winter camouflage stuff by uh, 
AK or is it MIG? I think it's MIG actually. Yeah. It's so this stuff here. Looks like a really thick white sludge and I think it looks nice for a fabric. White coating, you know. And also on the collar there you can see I've I gave him a thing there that I'm pretty sure is a rank, I'm not sure what rank that is, but that's the one I saw in the uniform. And then I did an SS logo. And you have no idea how hard that was. But I took out the smallest brush I have. Which is this one right here. And then I got some white oil paints instead of like acrylics. And then for the uh, this marking here, the this one here wasn't that hard. I just kinda did a dot and two lines, but the SS was really hard. I kind of I did a kinda like a zigzag and then when I actually since it was oil paints, it took a while to dry. I actually used the hobby knife and can kinda shape them. You know, kinda like dig out the the parts where it kinda goes in and out on the S. So that's a tip there. But yeah, that was quite hard to do. But uh it pays off, it looks nice. So now we're gonna do the actual camouflage pattern on the figure's helmet. So for the camouflage pattern on the helmet, I was originally planning to use some Tamiya XF9 Hull Red uh, for the red-brown color, used by the German army and tanks and things like that, you know. Um, but the, the jar won't open, so I've had to mix my own, as you can see it behind there. I have a couple of colors, but it's, it's pretty close. I'm, I was planning to use the red-brown, so if you're going to simulate this, just use red-brown, or sorry, the Hull Red. I mix them together out of the jar and then I put some thinner in it because it's never thin enough when you get it. And now I'm going to do my best to see with this camouflage pattern. So I'm pretty sure the camera had trouble focusing on that when I shot it, but here, this is the camouflage pattern of the helmet. It's kind of a, uh, no, don't, no, stay. It's kind of a more pointy-edged uh, camo pattern. And I'm going to do the same thing with a uh, green color. And now I'm going to put the green on. It's the same XF13 that I used before. But I have lightened it and, of course, thinned it. Yeah, I'd say that's like maybe a third to a fifth. Uh, so, sorry, a third to 50% white in the mix. I'm not exactly certain.
All right, so I finished applying the camouflage pattern. As you can hopefully see if the camera stays focused on it. Yeah, it's quite an intricate pattern. Uh, I did about, I don't know, probably did three layers total. I went back and a little more green. Like I kind of did a base, base area, like base areas, big areas, and then I went back and did some big green ones, and I went back and did some little red ones and little green ones, and I went back and made even littler ones. But as you can see, there are lots of little sections in there that are their own little speck of green or red. Yep, I'm not sure what the name of this camouflage pattern is, but I've seen it a couple times before. And I found a picture of it. It might be actually like, I don't know, not even German. It might be like a Russian fabric put over it. I have no idea. But I like it. And since this is supposed to be a like late war kind of figure, I thought I can't have like a winter camouflage pattern the habit. would be pretty nice. Now I'm out reapplying the MIG winter camouflage stuff over top of it. Very thin though, so I don't like, you know, but they washed out the color. And now applying a uh, very thin version of the same uh, brown wash that I use in the game of pouches. And lastly what I did was I just put the light, uh, sorry, dry mud pigment, the same one that I put on the boots and the pants. I just lightly dusted that over the helmet just to kind of bring it together and also tone down the white because it was, you know, very white and white gets dirty pretty fast. Uh, the, the, the pigment that I used here, it's this dry mud from MIG. So you can see it's nice kind of almost skin color. And uh, I do sometimes use it on skin just a bit. Yeah, but as you can see, uh, the gear is looking really nice now. And that's the end of the video. Uh, I've basically covered, I might paint the entire figure, which is nice. And he turned out incredibly well, if I do say so myself. I'm really happy with him. Especially the camo on the helmet, I'm quite liking that. It doesn't look very, you know contrasting with itself. It's a nice blend with the pigments I put on it. Anybody have any questions, please feel free to post comments and people please feel free to post not to sorry to respond to other people's comments. Yeah. My last figure painting video was, you know, not this good and the figure was nowhere near this good. But I'm really happy with how it came out. Especially the face that's nice and dark as opposed to the pale color as you end up with. And now I've got some more figures over there to start working on. <laughs> and um, I'm probably going to do some camouflage patterns on those so I might come up with a couple more videos just doing camouflage patterns like you know, for the tunic and stuff like that. Yep, yeah, but uh, thanks for watching this review, guys. Hope it helped. Yeah, if you just try figures. If you don't have the courage to do so, just go for it. You have to actually do them to practice and get better. Yeah, and that's the end of the video, guys. Thanks for watching. This is Panzermarch36. Goodbye.